so I wanted to touch on this for a second. Um, in project one, we were looking at the Shockley model of a diode, which tells you the current through the diode given the voltage drop across the diode. And there are a number of parameters in this equation, but the goal of the thing was to, um, to figure out the ones we don't know. So for example, the charge on the electron, the Boltzmann constant, and the temperature, those are all things we knew. Um, we can set the voltage drop across the diode uh, but we don't know this eta thing. It's a some kind of ideality factor. And we don't know I0, the reverse um, leakage current. So those were the two things we were really sort of after. Um, but I think in the process of going through all the analysis and figuring out all the uh, linearization parameters A, B, and ultimately C, when we got down here to our final model, a, B, and C. Of course, A, B, and C relate to uh, C as the resistance, the internal resistance of the diode, effectively. A and B are both related to eta and I0, but um, somehow a lot of folks didn't catch on to the fact that uh, I wanted you guys to go back and get I0 and eta from the analysis. That was sort of the point of the thing, although I apparently didn't make that sufficiently clear for everybody. Although some people picked up on it, uh, not everybody did. So what I want to do is to go back, let me go back to the, I, I gave this video on evaluating the coefficients a, b, and c, but uh, I didn't explain in the video how to get from a, b, and c back to these uh, unknown coefficients in the Shockley, in the Shockley model. But the point is, um, a is directly related to eta and known parameters. So KBT at room temperature is about uh, 40th of an electron volt. I'm sorry, KBT over Q is about uh, a 40th of a volt. KBT is a 40th of an electron volt, but of course Q is the charge on the electron. So KBT over Q is about a 40th of a volt. So um, eta is simply A which uh, must have, let's see, let's look at it. Uh, the way A shows up, it's multiplied by the log of the current. So logs are unitless, so A must have units of volts, right? So A is un in units of volts. B also must be in units of volts because it's A times a log, right? And B here shows up, and it's got volts, so that must be volts. And C, of course, has units of ohms, because C times a current is equal to a voltage. So C is in units of ohms. A and B are both in units of volts. So let's pop back over here. Um, it looks like eta is going to be A divided by uh, a 40th of, an of a volt. So I should be able to, if I, I can just show A here, so I can just say A eta is going to be A divided by, I think the actual number is 0 0.257, 0 0.0257 volts. So eta is about 1.86 in, in my data. Now your data, it could be a slightly different number, but um, the point is it's a number of order unity. So it's not going to be 100, and it's not going to be 100. It's going to be 2 or Four or 0.5 or something like that. Some number around 1, order of magnitude 1. Now, uh, that's eta. So once, but once we've got eta, um, we can also, uh, well, once we've got A, we can also get I0 because B divided by minus A is the log of I0. So that means I0 must be E to the minus B over A. So let's, uh, let's calculate that. I0 is equal to uh, the exponential minus b divided by a. And let's look at what that guy is. That's the 10 to the negative 20. So that's a very tiny leakage current, okay, according to this model. Um, and so uh, that should be in, um, In amps, so it's well, it's whatever units you use to measure i. So if you used i, if the i's you used in your equations were amps, then that would be amps. If you use milliamps, it would be milliamps. It would be whatever, because we've got here a natural log of i divided by i zero. So that means that 
um, as we're fiddling around, the eyes have to keep the same units in order for that to remain a unitless ratio. Okay, so um, that's the idea. The point is you can get eta, you can get I0 uh, from the parameters of the fit. All right, we'll see you guys next time.